Thanks for joining us on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. Sample these. A new report has warned that black and ethnic minority people in Britain face what it describes as entrenched inequality in many areas. The report by Equality and Human Rights Commission found that the situation has worsened over the past five years. The BBC's Frankie McCamley reports. On the streets of Britain, in the workplace, just about everywhere, many black and ethnic minority people say they still don't feel like they're on a level playing field. I've definitely seen people get more promotions than myself, um, which obviously isn't really fair, and I, and I, don't, I don't think it is right. It, it, should, I don't, it shouldn't be happening at all. Most uh, ethnic mi minority people believe that you have to be trained in certain areas to be able to fill a certain position and they feel that certain positions are reserved for and these views are reflected in a sweeping review looking at areas including education employment and housing which reiterates what we already know that black and ethnic minority people in britain still face higher unemployment rates and are hugely underrepresented in positions of power but it also says the eu referendum has had an effect on attitudes we're not saying that the uh, decision in the referendum itself was a racist decision. We don't think it was. We don't think Britain is racist. But what we do think is that it's legitimized the views of certain people who are perhaps prejudiced or don't understand the uh, needs and aspirations of uh, particularly black and minority ethnic communities. The report found poorer white communities also face a continuing disadvantage. The problem with racial inequality is very significant. Um, there's gaps of three times, four times, five times, depending on the indicator you're looking at, you're less likely to get employed, less likely to have access to good health care, less likely to live in good accommodation. And so the government really needs to take this seriously and do something about it urgently. The government says it's committed to making a country that works for everyone. However, black and ethnic minority people here say they still don't feel like they're treated equally. So there's clearly some way still to go. Frankie McCamley, BBC News. Well, let's take a closer look at the detail of this report which has been published today. The Equality and Human Rights Commission says amongst minorities in the UK, Africans face high unemployment and those who are employed earn 23% less than their white counterparts. Now, ethnic minorities are still massively underrepresented at all levels of government, currently making up um, only 6% of parliament. The report also says ethnic minorities are also more harshly treated by the justice system. For example, in 2014, black people made up to 10% of the total prison population, although they only make up 35 of the UK's population. Well, let's bring in Toyin Agbetu. He is a British-Nigerian social rights activist. Thanks for taking time to talk to us and focus in Africa. And you're well known for interrupting a service that was commemorating <laughs> <laughs> the abolition of, 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 of slave trade. But that was in 2007. We are in 2016. Does a report like this surprise you? No, it doesn't. I mean, 2007 is quite significant for many things. Uh, amongst that was the abolishment of the Commission for Racial Equality in the UK. And with that abolishment, there was a kind of like a mission accomplished where post-racial, uh, multiculturalism was never... And we're seeing now, sort of like, you know, many decades afterwards, that entrenched racism uh, still exists. Why do you think that is? I think it's because it's never been really addressed. I think people kind of like acknowledge it's there, but they kind of like talk about the extreme extremities of it. So we talk about overt racism, somebody using the N-word, some uh, violence. That's, that's defined as racism. But what real racism is, is that kind of invisible processes that affects your everyday life. So as an African person, you know, you go for a job and, you know, you're, you're overqualified and you still can't get it. You go for housing, you go over a counterpart with the same name, and we can see evidence of that happening, mm -hmm. that if you're European, you'll get the... the the, 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 the accommodation and as African you won't. I so, so, so in your, what you're saying is, is it a reluctance, deliberate reluctance to talk about it or to discuss these kind of issues or what is it? I think there's, there's been this mantra that if we don't talk about racism, it will eventually go away. And I think with the abolishment of the CRE, one of the things that happened was that it became merged into human rights and there was no focus specifically on racism. 
One of my arguments and one of the things I push forward is that we do need a commission for racial equality, a new one, one with teeth. One so that when there are racist incidents, what happens is that the perpetrators are punished, either financially or penally. They end up in jail. Right now, I mean, I've read this report by the Equalities and Human Rights Commission. It's got these lovely words about monitoring the statistics and we're going to kind of like publish our strategies. But there's no teeth. There's no... Uh, no, you know, no implication, there's no justice, there's nothing in there to say, but what if you don't do it? And that's a question I want to ask you, because obviously you've worked a lot on social rights issues, and uh, have you seen any results at all, not even one positive result from what you've been doing so far? Oh no, I mean, overt racism is, or well, it was down until the recent Brexit vote. Unfortunately, what's happening now, people are becoming more emboldened to be racist. But, you know, overt racism, the, the types where I'd be assaulted by police officers, that doesn't happen as much as it used to happen. But what's happening is that intrinsic racism, the things that affect life opportunities, specifically for African people, has increased. And I think that's where, because I have children, and their life chances are actually damaged, not because that they're not doing their best, they're not studying, they're not excelling at school, but simply because they're colored of skin, simply because they're African. So we still have a long way to go. Oh, unfortunately, we still do. Toyin, thank you for taking time to talk to us on the program. Thank, thank you. you.